No, that's not going to work. That is not a Tarzan vine. Good morning YouTube, um, as you can see water has stopped falling from the sky and there's a, there's a mysterious ball of fire in the sky, not seen it for a while, but I uh, thought I would uh, celebrate its appearance by going out for a walk. I'm going to venture into the woods, see if my little shelter is there, undisturbed, maybe do a little review of my uh, snug pack response pack that I uh, carry quite a bit nowadays. That's typical. As soon as I get here, it's clouded over. Temperature feels like it's dropped five to six degrees and it's gonna rain. So let's get brawn to go first. Right, what I found is uh, hexamine burns. It heats up much quicker if it's closer to the cup. So I've stuck a little rock in there. I'll stick another rock with a little, it's got a little recess. In there, that tablet fits in there nicely. Sort of balance that in there, just like that. Paint the old lighter to it. Away we go. Just add water. Smells of fish. What's that water's um, simmering. Um, it's just starting to steam actually. Just want to do a quick overview of the little uh, snug pack response pack. There's nothing in depth, I'm just going to give you a little look around it because uh, I think this is a really nice bit of kit. It sort of um, fills that gap in between um, 20 litre day pack and pockets. <laughs> is a good way to describe it so you know if you're just going on a three four hour little jaunt in the woods um, morning afternoon something like that it's surprising what you can fit into this and how versatile it is so love a nice little look at this okay here we have the Snug Pack Response Pack. Uh, I'll put the materials on the screen because I'm not going to lie, I don't know what they are off the top of my head. Let's go around it, we'll go from the back to the front. So, it's got a waste pack. This is what we call in the UK a bum bag, what you guys in the States call 
a fanny pack, which will forever be hilarious in the UK. Um, there's a certain stigma in the UK attached to bum bags. It's a sort of a late 80s, early 90s, discman, new kids on the block type stigma. You can get over that. I think these things should make a comeback. Uh, you've got a waist belt. It's got these straps that uh, they pull tight. You've got little retainers. They work well enough. Chunky buckle. Uh, you also have... Um, these retainers to put into Molly on the back of a rucksack, which is quite useful. If you go around the front, you have this um, handbag handle, as I like to call it. This is quite useful. I don't know whether you saw in one of my other videos. I'll try and put a picture on the screen. I actually attach this tarp rolled up to the underside of this bag. And that worked quite well. And you, you know, you wouldn't. Okay, where am I going to fit a tarp in this? Well, easy, you just hang it off the bottom. So, quite versatile in that respect. Uh, you've got more Molly on the side. I have used this in the past for um, using those uh, attachable bottle holders. So, I've had a litre and a half on that side and a litre and a half on that side. So, that works quite well. You know, three litres in this little bag. Um, on your hips, quite well balanced, um, you know, three kilograms of weight you don't really notice. Um, inside you've got a pocket there, just to give you an idea of sort of stuff I put in there. House keys, car keys, got some cordage, got some, uh, got fire steel in there, little pocket. Oh, something I didn't mention on the back of the pack, we go back round. Um, what you also have, if you attach this to the back of a, a rucksack or another bag, you've got these Velcro straps which enable you to tuck the waist belt inside here, uh, sort of fold it in neatly, stow it, attach that Velcro there, and that stows it all neatly, which I think is quite a nice feature. They thought that out clearly. Just want to show you the zips on this thing. Okay, this little pocket here. Double zipped, as you see, chunky zips, plastic pulls, little branded snug pack pulls, grippy on that pocket. Let's undo these buckles. Double zips, plastic pullers on that pocket. Same again on this pocket, and guess what? The pocket on the front, same again, double pulls. Plastic uh, plastic pullers, grippy, you can do those with wet hands, gloves. Um, like I said, they put some thought into this. Oh, that coffee's going down well. Right, just to give you a, a look inside the front pocket, well, I tend to keep medical stuff in here. It's got two separate pockets, it's got a pocket there, and you see I've got some uh, corn plasters there, antiseptic wipes, bite ease. Uh, you've got two like mini admin panels there. Savlon, always useful for cuts and grazes. Uh, in there, lip balm. Uh, what else have we got? A selection of plasters, more antiseptic wipes, Zavirax, because no one wants nasty herpes. Uh, big bottle of uh, uh, hand alcohol spray. Good fire starter, good for getting drunk. Um, so, yeah, that's what I keep in there. Please don't take me seriously when I say get drunk on the hand spray. I'm, I'm not very serious most of the time when I do these videos. So the main pocket inside, I don't know if you can see that, you've got a mesh um, admin type pouch in there. What have I got in there? I've actually got a head torch in there this time because last time I forgot it. I've got some more coffees in there. Um, this is quite um, it's deceptively larger than it looks. I have fitted, um, well you've all seen this cup in my um, videos with the pot that goes on top of that. I fitted a one and a half litre bottle nested in there with the other one on top of there uh, and my gas stove and a couple of other odds and sods in that main pocket. So uh, yeah, you've got to cram it in but it's amazing how much you can cram in here. And I have had this thing for, I don't know, maybe a year. Used and abused it. Not treated it with kid gloves. And um, 
yeah, there's not a rip, not a tear, not a pull in the stitching. Um, it's all pretty good. And as I said, I have crammed things into this way beyond its uh, intended design and it has worked well. And as I said, I think this just fills a nice gap in between pockets and a 15, 20 litre day pack. Some days you just don't want a day pack. Um, you sling this on your hips and uh, away you go. Anyway, so that's my little, uh, not really, like I said, not a review, just an overview because I like it and uh, I think it might be useful for other people. It's useful for me. Got all these uh, bits and pieces packed away. I have actually broken my Lixada stove. Uh, there is a retaining pin, however one of the other pins in the hinges has uh, slipped out the bottom and gone missing, so I will... Okay, exactly as you see that one's doing there. It has slipped out, one has slipped out and gone able. So I will have to make a repair to that. It's not the end of the world, it still functions as a stove. I just need to put a retaining pin in the hinge. Yeah, someone of my ingenuity uh, shouldn't prove to be a problem. Just a small bottle of water today, 500 mil. As I said, I have had 100, one and a half litre in here, no problems with a pot, a pan, and a gas stove. So. It's amazing what you can fit into small places if you force it. I'm going to leave this tarp here again. So I won't be demonstrating the tarp hanging off the back of this, but um, like I said, I'll try and find a, a shot from one of my previous videos. But there you go, I like this. Look at it, rugged and manly and green. Honestly, the buckle is complete and utter overkill on this. I've had 50 litre packs of smaller buckles, so uh, there's no danger of it going anywhere it's not meant to go. Well, I'll tell you something, the temperature hasn't half dropped quickly. I'm a bit disappointed in myself because I did that whole video, had a cup of coffee, everything. Well, I had a uh, chocolate chip shortbread biscuit in my pocket all along, I forgot all about. Just had to walk, unfit. I'm sure I used to be much fitter. Um, I know I did. Um, anyway, just a short video. Just uh, I had to keep churning them out uh, as we can't get out on any rural adventures at the minute. I think it's important. Um, one of the real shames of all this is some of my favourite channels, not huge channels, but let's say locally established channels. You know, channels with a couple of thousand subscribers. You know, that regularly get a couple of hundred comments. Um, a lot of them have just dropped down dead since uh, before the Christmas lockdown. They've stopped putting out content altogether. Um, which I understand if you're an outdoor channel and you can't go outdoors, it does make it a bit tricky. But, uh, you know, there's means and ways of putting out other content. It's a bit of a shame because a lot of these people are really knowledgeable, got loads of information locked away upstairs that they could share. And, uh, I think that sort of content at a time like this would be ideal because there's a lot of people who can't even get out and do silly things like me. Um, I'm fortunate in that I've lost my job 
that's not fortunate. Um, no, that's not strictly true. I don't have a full-time job anymore. I work ad hoc part-time, which gives me time to do this. But I've got friends who are still employed in full-time jobs, and they have been sat at home in front of a laptop for nearly 12 months, and they're slowly going out their minds. Um, yeah, it's not really healthy for you. That's why I think it's important for people who can still do things like this. They're able to produce it and give people a bit of escapism. They can uh, vicariously enjoy the outdoors. It is actually quite nice, the outdoors. So yeah, it's a shame. I wish I wish some of those channels hadn't dropped off the radar because uh, some of the people in some of those videos I actually quite like, you know, I quite like them as people regardless of uh, them going out and shelter building and camping and, you know, I'd watch them baking a loaf of bread if they wanted to. Um, yeah, so I do wonder what a lot of those people are doing who were churning out videos, you know, maybe one a week, maybe a couple of weeks, all of a sudden they're doing nothing. Um, it's got to affect them. Uh, there you go. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now after that small mini uh, not rant. Just, just concern, really. I just... Anyway, I'll keep churning out silly videos like this. So my two or three subscribers can enjoy them and uh, anyone else who happens to accidentally click the link. Um, I will see you all again soon.